Hello, hello, and welcome to the Introverted Manager. Today I would like to build upon previous video I did about Dumble chart in Denip. Let's see how we can add indicators whether value grew compared to previous one and how it works in Denip and specifically in Vega Lite. Let's dive right in. As promised, let's continue with Dumble chart. However, in this video, I would like to go through dynamic parts of the spec and how it works all together. Just as a reminder, whenever you highlight something or select something, the rest is becoming more a pack. That's one thing we will be working on or going through today. Then tooltips, how those work, as well as how the dynamic uh, formatting for um whether current year value is lower high, higher or lower than previous year value works too let's go into the spec let's open the spec and let's start with transform section in this transform section i can collate few metrics that i will need later for tooltip. I decided to do it inside visual just to avoid bringing more measures that I might not necessarily need in other parts of my report. However, you can also do it with measures. So there are a few things that I calculate here. Difference between current year and past year, metric difference. As you see, it's simple uh, calculation. Then metric difference percent, where I use that metric difference and divide by last year's value. With short category, you are already familiar. And skipping forward. Since we already discussed metrics that I use in tooltip, let's skip to tooltip itself and see how it works. I'll scroll down fully. And within the layer, and currently I am on circle current year layer, within that layer, I have tooltip section. Important thing here is that you will have to repeat that section in each layer. This is needed so that tooltip displays whenever user hovers over either this part of the dumbbell here or circles. So whenever wherever user hovers, it will display uh, tooltip. So let's go through the code itself. Users category field, which is displayed as is because it's a text. Uh, the next one is total sales amount, which is my measure from Puma BI which is a number and I format it utilizing uh, Power BI and dynamic formatting string. If you are unfamiliar with dynamic formatting strings, you can watch my other video where I went into more detail about that. However, here I'm adding dollar sign and also format negative values in accounting format with uh, brackets. Next field is total sales amount last year, similar approach, and here the last two, I'm using those dynamic uh, values which are calculated within visual itself. Metric difference and metric different percent, and they are formatted appropriately. And this will give you, let's see, for here, and this will give you this standard Power BI native looking tooltip. Again, as I mentioned, you have to repeat that tooltip section within each layer. As you can see here, I have it here as well. Now, let's move on to dynamic color formatting for whether value is larger compared to previous year or lower than previous year. Let's find circle for layer 
for current here. Actually, it's the same layer that we used. And let's see how it works. So it's a circle. We went through that in previous video, encoding, etc. However, for color, I have dynamic condition. In a nutshell, it's an if statement. If a metric difference is less than zero, metric difference is difference between or delta between current year and last year. It's less than zero, color read with negative. Color which comes from Power BI theme. It's a good practice to take colors from the theme that way you don't have to hard code it here and whenever you change the theme, if you ever change the theme or the color, it will propagate to the visual as well. So, if it's lower than zero, color it in negative color, red in my case, otherwise in positive, green in my case. Simple as that. Syntax, of course, specific to Vigalite, however, in a nutshell, it's simple if statement. If, then, else. Okay. And we're done with that. Now, let's proceed to that selection, highlight, and opacity. For this, you will have to switch to settings and enable two options that are not enabled by default. Expo expose cross highlight values for measures and cross filtering selection. Enable this and you will see that or you will see new field in your data set called under, underscore underscore selected, which shows you if nothing is selected, everything is in neutral. However, if you select something, you will see that everything is in off unless it's selected, which is on. So we have three states. We need to make a condition for this similar to color, right? <laughs> However, in this case, we can simplify it a bit because we don't need to code all of these three states. We can just code once, just one, because just one is different. And this condition is off state. When it's off, the opacity should be lower. Okay, so we have here opacity section and condition for selected field. If it's off, opacity is set to 0.25. Otherwise, whether it's neutral or whether it's on, it's set to one. That's what gives you that uh, effect. But let me make everything smaller so you see better. That what gives that effect. However, as you can see here, additionally, I have outline around circles whenever I select it. That works in similar fashion. I add condition to different uh, section, which is stroke. Stroke is a border. And for stroke, whenever it's selected, I make it black. Whenever it's unselected, I make it gray to look similarly to a backdrop, the gray backdrop. And I just saw I have here condition for stroke width. However, I don't actually need it here because it's the same whether it's selected or unselected. It's the color that is different. So. I can remove it here and you will see that nothing changes. I executed it, I removed it. Let's try. Looks the same. So I don't actually need it here. And that's how you can add some dynamic elements to your DNIP charts. It's just the beginning. There will be more. That's all for today. Subscribe and see you in the next one, right?